Warriors, welcome. My friends, 99% of anxiety sufferers out in the world are going through specific patterns and habits that are causing them to stay stuck, that are causing them to follow a certain vocabulary within them, meaning coping, managing, and just getting through the day. I don't want this to be you. And because I don't want this to be you, I want you to really absorb these five habits that the majority of anxiety sufferers partake in each and every day. Absorb them and begin reminding yourself to become the opposite of these patterns and habits. Let's do this, guys. Number one thing that 99% of anxiety sufferers do in the world is they aren't analyzing their thoughts and emotions. A thought will show up and they'll begin branching from one possibility to the next possibility to the next possibility. Next thing you know, the thought that started off as such a small snowball became bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, as that snowball, that thought or that idea grows, the emotions start to take over. The limbic system in your brain starts to go, oh my goodness, yes, our interpretation of this specific situation is in fact a very threatening one. And all of a sudden the emotions get involved and there's no analyzing whatsoever as to what is happening within that person. Because the majority of anxiety sufferers are highly instinctual emotional. If I think it, it must be true. If I feel it, it must be debilitating or threatening or some kind of a threat to my survival in some way. So we must utilize the most important word when it comes to anxiety recovery. You want to know what that is? That word is counter. When the thoughts show up, there must be a counter to that thought. When the emotions show up, there must be a counter to the perspective that your brain is taking in that moment. Number two things that the majority of anxiety sufferers do is they aren't recognizing the limitless possibilities in the moment. Very much narrow-minded, very much tunnel vision, for the majority of anxiety sufferers in the world. Something happens, okay, how many options do I have? One. And to a large extent, this is not their fault. Because when that survival brain kicks in, and when the fight, flight, or freeze response becomes activated, the emotions start to take over. We become instinctual. But, that doesn't mean that the neocortex, the thinking brain, doesn't have a say in that moment. It does. The only problem is that it just hasn't been practiced enough. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to begin recognizing the limitless amount of possibilities to a given thought, to a given feeling, to a given situation going on around you, wouldn't that open up your eyes and your heart to taking a new type of action in that moment? And isn't that action going to be studied and recorded by your subconscious? And your subconscious is gonna go, well, what did we do last time we were in this situation? And it's gonna remember the different action that you took and it's going to go, yeah, we survived that. Let's do that again. All of a sudden, your life starts to change. And your life changes because you start to change. Because your self-concept starts to change. Very, very important. Number three is they aren't allowing themselves to feel bad. Instead, each and every time a negative feeling shows up, they beat themselves up so much. You know, they go, 
wake up in the morning and I'm feeling pretty good, right? I'm, things are okay. You know, I'll check my sensations. I'll check my thoughts. I don't have any negative thoughts right now. My sensations aren't present. Oh my goodness. Maybe it's gone. Maybe it's all gone. Maybe I'm turning into someone else. And then an hour goes by. And something unconsciously brings up the idea that, hey, it's again a threatening situation. Or you should feel bad. So you do. And what starts to happen is the person, the anxiety sufferer, the majority of anxiety sufferers say, no, 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 no. I can't feel bad or, or else it's a bad day. It's a bad day. If I get a negative thought, it's a bad day. If I feel sad, it's a bad day. If I feel slightly anxious, it's a bad day. No, 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 no. That's just a moment. It's not a bad day. It's not a bad week, month. It's not a bad life. It's just a moment, warrior. So keep it as a moment as long as you can recognize that it is a moment and that it is okay to feel bad from time to time. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. So stop trying to be so perfect in your emotional state. Number four is they aren't allowing themselves to have fun. I'm making a sandwich. What's fun about this? I'm sitting on the toilet. What's fun about this? I'm holding hands with my significant other. What's fun about this? I'm shooting some hoops, playing basketball. What's fun about this? No, no, no. What the majority of anxiety sufferers do is what do I have to be concerned about in this moment? That's what they tell themselves. Because worry always seems to overtake enjoyment, fun, relaxation, peace, whatever it is. So I urge you today to, and this is very important, to allow yourself to have fun. Even though you were a child during your childhood and people in your life didn't allow you to enjoy your life, to enjoy the present moment, to feel that satisfaction and happiness. Although that may have been your childhood, it doesn't have to be your present and your future. Let's understand that. What's in the past is in the past. You have the ability to create any future you want. And let me tell you something. You will not be able to create that future that you desire until you start having more fun. It's very important. Number five thing that the majority of anxiety sufferers do is they aren't recognizing the great strides that they are making. Every single day, it's about how far I have to go, but it's never about how far I've come. Why is that the case? Can you imagine if each and every day you focused on all the beautiful baby steps that you're taking forward in your life? I'm putting in the effort. I'm listening to the Anxiety Guy content. I'm absorbing the information. I'm applying the information. I'm speaking the information. I'm teaching the information as best I can. Can you imagine what your life is going to be like then? Can you imagine how much momentum you're going to have then? Very, very, very important lesson. My friends, understand these principles. Please begin applying them today. Only if you want your life to change for the better. Remember, you are more than anxiety. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions on the End the Anxiety program, head on over to this website here. Have a wonderful day. You deserve it.